Hi, I'm Bob Orlando, and I have been for as long as I can remember. With that introduction, you should get the idea that this is going to be a little bit lighthearted. We're going to deal with a serious subject, but we want to have fun with it. Anything that you can have fun with, you can learn so much better. We're going to cover today five principles of Indonesian fighting arts. They are adhesion, whiplash, gyroscopic rotation, shearing, and seating. We're going to use techniques to show you their application, but the techniques are not what you want to focus on. You want to focus on the underlying principles. We're going to use drills that will help you internalize these movements so they become part of your arsenal and your repertoire. We want to begin with the short sequences, which are not complete techniques, but just parts of them. We want to go through the short sequence, and then as the video progresses, you'll see those sequences developed into full-blown techniques. But the short sequences will demonstrate where we're going, what the destination is. And with that, I want to make sure that you don't focus on the techniques. The techniques are not what's important. The underlying principle is very important. If you understand the principle and can internalize it, then you can make up all the techniques you want, techniques that fit you perfectly and the situation in which you find yourself. Whether you're an expert or a novice in the martial arts, you're going to need to understand a few terms. And we'll keep them to a, just a handful. When you engage an opponent, there are basically two responses that you can have. One is deflection or redirection. The other is striking. Now, I'm excluding avoidance because avoidance doesn't engage an opponent. There, you're just fleeing from him. In the definition that we're going to use for deflection responses, we ascribe two terms primarily, block left and block right. Let me show you block left. The first deflection we're going to use is called block left. What I'll do is I'll give you a sequence that shows you how it's used, change the angle, do it again, and then we'll break it down and see what we've done. Against a right punch, moving in, boom, block left. What I've done is, one, this hand comes up into place, two, and I hit. Timing-wise, it should move like, boom, bam! I want to one, two, hit him with the wrist, drive into here. The blocking element is the first two moves. One, this hand comes up into place, two. Now, switching sides, I'm going to step in one, Hit here too, and all the while I'm climbing in. So Gus, if I can have you stand right here for a second. I move in, one, two, three, hit. First hand hits, this hand must come into position. It's called block left because from our center of the universe perspective, every one of us is born thinking we're at the center of the universe. Some of us still do. But from that perspective, everything going this way is to my left. Everything going this way is to my right. So using that perspective, this is block left. It's a block because I'm not striking immediately. One, two. It doesn't matter how strong this man's arm is. I can hit it and hit it and hit it. He's got to spend energy putting it back. I'm just going at it like a piston, driving it away. If the first one doesn't move it, the second one comes in and takes his place. I climb up his arm and hit him. That's block left. It is one movement, but two motions. The far hand picks it up. The second, left hand, slides over the top and displaces it. Done with movement, I move in and strike, and you can add all kinds of other things to it. One of the beauties of this technique is, or this sequence, is that it works against either arm. I can have a hooking right, I can have a straight right, I move in and I hit. If he's in a left lead and he's firing a quick left, I can move off this way. Where you don't want to use it is this great big hooking left. I'd end up having to move like this, suicide. But against a straight left, everything still works. You can pick your targets, you can do whatever you want. The next blocking deflection routine we're going to use is called block right. From that center of the universe perspective, anything going to my right, I call block right because I'm using a blocking method. I'm going to move in on my partner here, one, two, three. Block right was the first two counts, one, two. You can move it out to here if you want. And in some, place, in some places you do. In one place we will, as you'll see later on. But for now, I want this to shave down this arm. I'd like this wedge to be created here in front of us. So I'm going to slide down this arm. Then I just follow it in. For block right, I want to use this hand intercepting near. It's a very relaxed slap. It should not be stiff in any way. I want to intercept out here for the reason that I have maximum leverage out here. Regardless of how strong his arm is, 
I can slap it out of the way quickly. The other hand comes from underneath and reinforces. That's because it's a little bit awkward to get it over this way. So since I'm picking this up here, this comes underneath, I have all this room. When I did block left, I picked it up far away. Coming from underneath makes no sense. This can now fly over the top. The beauty of this is, as with the other one, I can work against either arm. Here I'm using against his left. If I'm feeding with a right, and it's a straight right, don't want to work on this on a big haymaker, but a straight right, I can make the same movement. When you see this block right response, you can easily get confused with, what's occurs, with what occurs in the other classical systems, the Japanese, the Korean, the Okinawan, those, th those arts that are more popular in the United States today, uh, at least by sheer numbers. Is block right a precursor? Did it precede what's being done in the other systems now? Or does it follow? Is it an evolution of improvement? I don't know, but look at this. Dan and I are going to do three movements here. We're going to do the same block right. He's going to do it in the classical method, and I'm going to do it in the method that we use. Ready, Dan? Okay. One, two, three. I don't know which came first, but in my opinion, something was lost. Maybe there were reasons for this coming across hard like this, but what you have is one incredibly strong arm going very, very slow, where I want speed. Now, the reason you want speed is because the formula for impact shows you that this much of an increase in velocity yields this much of an increase in impact. You can have all the tension you want, you can have all the mass that you want, but you want speed. Now, you've seen just two blocking methods. The two that we use primarily, block left and block right, but they're like binary digits. There's only zero and one. But on any computer in the world, you can generate millions of instructions. You can print all the letters you want, all the graphics that you see in whatever computer package you're using on the window. That pops up, bingo. Those are all off of two digits. What you're learning is something that is few in number, but the options are incredible, just innumerable. What we want to do now is take these two movements and take them into two versions, one for the left, one for the right, extended versions. And we'll start with extended block right. What we're going to do with this next one, this is called block right extended. And I'm going to position his arm here, show you how it works, and we'll do it a little bit of speed here. What I want to do is just like block right, I want to intercept near this hand and slide forward. It's very important that I go forward. I don't want to go out to the side. Now, you can pretend you're doing uh, a system where if I hit him right here at 3 o'clock in the afternoon, he's going to drop and 40 years from now he'll die of cancer. What I want to do is I want to take this snake and I want to bite that spot. So I aim and drive it down. Doesn't do me any good to hold it up here. I have to actually wedge down. Again, here's that wedge concept that we used this way. Now I'm driving it this way. At speed, from here I can hit him. I can do whatever I want. Distract him completely. I can destroy his neck. And you'll see that in other techniques. The objective here is not so much the block. The block occurs, but it occurs incidentally to the technique. I want position. That's the objective here, is position. If you're playing pool, the thing to do is to not sink one ball. It's to run the table. An advanced player would do exactly that. He makes a shot and makes sure that he has the right bank, bounces off, he's positioned to make another shot. Very important concept that you don't want to lose here. Uh, if you just sink one ball, you're not going to win the game this way. If you don't get the shot that you want, you make sure your opponent doesn't get one. You want to move in, slide across. The near hand again, it intercepts. I've got maximum leverage. Now what happens with this arm is it slides down him as I advance. It's very important. As I advance, it slides down. It doesn't move here, and then the hand goes forward. I want to get in on my opponent. Stepping forward, sliding through, forcing this down. He has very few options available to him. There's a simultaneous advance in these techniques. Very important. One, two. Now I can strike him, do whatever I want. This is extended block right. Now let me show you extended block left. The next movement is block left extended. Same principle as block left, but now it extends across the body. If this is the blow that I'm dealing with, I'm going to intercept, Glance and extend across the body. This arm is dropped. I want to be close to this man. So I move in and hit. Go ahead and elbow me, Gus. He doesn't have anything because he doesn't have any range at all. If I'm out here and I make this maneuver and I don't check this arm, 
He can elbow me. That can hurt. As before, the far hand picks it up. The left hand, the one that's back, is already positioned. If I do this, too late. If I do this, it's too far from the action. Four feet. I'm right into the action. I hit, glance off, pull him into an elbow, take him down. Once again, intercept at range. This has all the room to slide over. Glances up across the face, comes back, pulls him into an elbow, peel him back, just like peeling an onion. This is extended block left. You've seen block left, block right, block right extended, and block left extended. Of the two motions, block right and block left, block left is the most important. And that's because most of the time you're dealing with this right haymaker punch, this looping right. There are far fewer people that are trained boxers that know how to flick out a real nasty jab to stop your charge. So this is the one you've got to deal with most of the time. Dan, can you get me in here for a second? What you uh, face most of the time is this hooking right punch. You use block left on it, it's easy to pick up. Block right on that is murder. You'd have to deal with a straight right. Very few people throw a really good straight right. So block left is the most important of the two. With block left, it's a simultaneous motion. Now this is critical because if this arm is back here, it's not going to do you any good. Simultaneous motion. Block right is about a beat and a half, one, two. But this one, block left occurs immediately. You can train for equality of motion, but we train this one side, strong side forward. There are a variety of reasons for that. But just let me say that what we want to do is come up with a common position. This is block right. Note the position. This is the resulting position from block left. I get one position, two basic movements. Again, we're playing binary here. I can just take a small number of principles and give myself many options. But block mode is not my destination. This is not where I want to be. This is not where I want to be. Strike mode is. Let me show you strike left. You can't block forever. The only way you can do that is to wear your opponent out. You better do more aerobics than he's been doing. So at some point in time, you need to hit the opponent. And that's what we're doing here. With strike left, I'm going to pick up this arm just like block left. It's going to move to my left. Unlike block left, the mode is striking. I'm going to strike. This protects my face, and it allows me to climb in. Now I hit him with this hand here. You can do any number of things from here because he can't see what's going on. You can hit him in here can hit him in the arm, can break this humorous bone if you hit it hard enough, which wouldn't be too awful humorous to him. Like the block mode, intercept far, this one must position. Now this is critical because it has to strike from here. The left hand slides over the top, and I want to cover his face with full area. You can use a relaxed chop. You can come into here, you can come into here, but you lose the blinding effect. You don't want to have a stiff hand that allows him something to peer under. If you remember in the movie Alien, John Hurt crawls down into the bowels of the alien spacecraft. This laser-like field protects the environment. He slips down in there and there are all these eggs. And he walks up to one and whoosh, it opens up. Scary. Then he peers over and you see this thing pulsating and all of a sudden, whoosh, he's got this alien stuck on his face. That's exactly what I want to do to him. You want to have this heavy, wet, relaxed alien stuck right on his face. You want maximum surface area because they did a, a study of the nerves in the body and they found that the head and face and the lips full of nerves built proportionately. We would really be way out of proportion if we did this. The head would be huge. I want to hit all those nerves. I want to cause this intense pain. Maximum surface. I could hit him like this. One finger. Oh, must concentrate all my force in one little point. Not in this case. One finger wouldn't do the job. That would. Step in, hit him right in the face, elbow him, rock and roll. Go wherever you want from there. Let's look now at strike right. You've seen strike left. Strike right follows the same principle. From my center of the universe perspective, anything going to my right is to my right. What I'm doing is I'm using strike mode instead of block, road, block mode, so it's not block right, it's strike right. 
First two movements are intercept near his hand. Maximum leverage. The second hand comes underneath, hits him in the face. One concept you want to get here is this hand isn't locked. I'm stuck. I want this to slide so I could slide over and over. It will move as I move in to hit him. One, two. Gus, on the other side, please. Same maneuver. One, two. Add the brake to it. Very easy to do. This stays at home, slides down the arm. As I advance, I intercept, strike, advance, I can break. Now, you can use a relaxed chop if you want. Other side, please, Gus. You can use a relaxed chop. One, two. Not stiff. Again, I want maximum contour. This is a soft, fleshy area. I want to hit it that way. You have a nice band that runs around here. This is where you have the carpal tunnel problem. But this band tightens all this up really nice. One, two. Works very well in that regard. Now, if he has this hand back here, a lot of people will grab and they're ready to hit you like so. You don't care about that. Execute the same maneuver. Intercept this one, hit him right in the face, shove it right into him. You can do what you want from there, but you're checking this arm simultaneously by the very nature of the movement. The beauty of these two hand mechanisms is that your hands are constantly in motion. You can pick up subsequent punches. Very good concept to grasp. So I'm going one, two. If he fires, it doesn't make any difference. Shoot that one. You just pick it right up. Now you're working in on the guy. Of the entries used by my instructor, Willem Dutoires, I would have to say that strike left and strike right are used about 75% of the time. He doesn't worry about the block mode so much because at his level he doesn't have to. The difference is that we train strong side forward, he trains more in the classical method. So he's more comfortable with the left side forward. As he does, the technique may change a little bit, but you'll see a definite bleed over. Dan? Here I'm going to pick it up with the near right hand. Strike out here. And then he would move in from there. Now it works like this. One, two, step in, hacksaw into the neck, strike him again, turn him around, put it to cover the body, do whatever I want from there. Again, we're moving in. He's taking the left lead approach, picks it up here, saves his face, hits the guy in the face. He can strike, hacksaw into the neck, pull it around, feed it to the belly button. Drive him down. I'm going to crush him here. And you can do whatever you want from there. All right. Moving in. One, two. Step in now. I'm in my right lead. So he transitions from the left lead to the right 99% of the time. One, two. Move into where he can hit. Do his strong side forward. Hacksaw into the neck. This is a grinding maneuver that we'll talk more about a little bit. Strikes in here. Now I'm going to pull his head into my belly button. Now I've got this long lever. Step back, keeping his head where it is, and just move him with the lever. Now I'm going to scissor over, maintaining all the control I need. Got the arm, head, can drive the elbow into the ear, the temple area, anywhere in here very painful. The key to that puta kapala is an Indonesian term which means rotating or turning the head. The key is to keep that center right here Use the large lever to move him around, dump him down, control him with another principle we call seating. Two more terms are helpful. One's called two hand, and the other is double hand. Two hand is two hands. One, two. Double is simultaneous. Let me show you. You've seen the two hand examples all along. One, two, three. One, two. The element that you want to pick up. Two hand. What I want to do now is double hand. I'll show you a Kempo technique that uses double hand. Very good technique, very aggressive. One, two. That's double hand. One. I attack this man. I'm not going to stand here and stop his block. He'll just push me over. Jump in. Hit him. One, two. Wherever I hit him, neck, face. Let me show you a double hand maneuver. And I'll switch sides so that you get both sides of the double hand because it's a little close. For the double hand maneuver, done in the Indonesian mindset, I'm going to pull this in. These are going to absorb. I'm going to be leaning forward, so I'm not standing back here absorbing this way. Lean forward, impale him on this. Again, double hand. The harder he pushes, the more he gets the pain. This side here, right hand maker punch, boom, 
going to hit him in here like this. Now you're in a position to do something. You're close enough. You've run the gauntlet. This idea of moving in and sticking is exactly where we want to go for the next topic, adhesion.